So you were diagnosed with a lump or a mass, and how do you know what it is and what do you need to do about it? Is it a cancer? Is it benign? Is it an infection? What is it? Although sometimes an ultrasound, a CT or an MRI can make a specific diagnosis, most of the time you end up doing a biopsy to find out really what it is. It used to be that you need a surgery just to find out what this tumor is. But nowadays, there's a much easier way, and it's called an image-guided biopsy. It is a relatively quick procedure that can be done with minimal recovery time. So in this video, I will cover what is a biopsy, how a biopsy is done, what are the types of biopsy that are possible, what happens to your tissue samples after the biopsy, and what to expect after the procedure. So let's get started. A biopsy is when we go in and take a small sample of tissue from a tumor or a growth that you may have. We then examine under the microscope to help find out if an area is normal, if it is inflamed, infected, or even if it's a cancer. The biopsy is certainly a very important step in making an accurate diagnosis and deciding on the best treatment options. Now, what are the types of biopsies that we can do? The smallest biopsy is called a fine needle aspiration, or FNA. An FNA is when you use a very thin needle to collect a small amount of cells or fluid. So it's usually done with a 25 gauge needle, which is very small. We then use some type of imaging guidance to introduce this needle into the mass. We actually aspirate some cells and we push it back and forth to collect the cells. And then those cells are analyzed in the microscope. The main advantage of the fine needle aspiration is that because the needle is so small, there is very little or essentially no risk. You may get a little bruise at the site, but there is no risk of major bleeding or any injury to any organ. The disadvantage is it only collects a small amount of tissue that may not be enough to do all the tests that are necessary. Also, we're collecting only cells and it's hard to see the structure of the tissue, which sometimes is key to make an accurate diagnosis. Fine needle aspirations are commonly used for biopsy of thyroid nodules and biopsy of nodules in the salivary glands. In these cases, there is a lot of data with fine needle aspirations and the pathologists have exact criteria for them. In our practice, when we do a fine needle aspiration, we usually have a cytologist on site that will examine these specimens at real time to make sure we have enough cells to make a diagnosis. This makes the chance of a non-diagnostic biopsy to be very low. Another type of biopsy is what's called a core biopsy. This is the most common biopsy that we do and we use for most parts of the body. This uses a slightly larger needle to remove a small cylinder or core of tissue. This gives us a lot more tissue than a fine needle aspiration and also allows the pathologist to analyze the structure of the tissue. Now, the way this is done is we use a needle guide that is introduced under imaging guidance into the mass. And this ends up being a hollow needle. And once the needle is in place that will match the needle guide, we can perform the core biopsy and you'll hear this loud click. And what happens is the needle will jump forward and we'll remove a small bite of tissue in the form of a cylinder. With these needles, we can actually choose how big of a bite we want to take, and we have different graduations that we can use. Although the tissue samples that are removed are small, they are enough to make a diagnosis in 99.9% .9 of cases. In a tiny amount of cases, a larger piece of tissue is necessary and will need to be removed surgically, but this is very rare these days. And these are called incisional or excisional biopsies. Now, the one exception is for bone biopsies. In those cases, we use a special needle because it's a hard structure. We then introduce the biopsy needle through this needle guide, and we use a little drill to actually take the piece of tissue. I know the drill sounds scary, but actually makes it much less painful and we also can obtain much better pieces of tissue. And why do we use a guide for these biopsies? Well, when we put the guide, we try not to put the guide into the lesion. We put the guide just short of the lesion. And then we introduce the biopsy needle through the guide, and that's going to go into the lesion. And then we do the biopsy, and then we take it out, leaving the needle guide. And then, essentially, at the end of the procedure, we take out the needle guide. This way, the needle guide never went into the lesion, and this would prevent 
any potential seeding through the track of the biopsy. And that's why we do that. Also with the guy, with one poke, we can do multiple biopsies, which sometimes are necessary to get enough tissue for all the tests that are necessary for each particular tumor. So what type of imaging do we use for the biopsies? We may use ultrasound, CT scanning, an MRI, or sometimes we even use x-rays. Many times we may use a combination of these modalities to perform a safe and efficient biopsy. The imaging is very important because not only will show exactly where the abnormal area is, where is the tumor, but also will show the important structures around it so we can avoid it. This makes the procedure safer, more accurate, and less invasive. The imaging we have nowadays provides an incredible amount of detail that allows us to identify any blood vessels, important organs, or nerves that may be around the lesion. And what happens with the sample after the biopsy? Of course, you label the sample right away and the sample goes immediately to the laboratory to be analyzed. There's a specialist called a pathology that examines the biopsy under the microscope. They will look for signs of infection, inflammation, abnormal cells, cancer, or a benign tumor. For example, if there is a suspicion of an infection, we'll send the test for cultures, gram stain, and sometimes PCR for different infections to determine the exact source of the infection. In case of tumors, additional stains will be performed. Stains are special dyes that are placed into the tissue and they tend to mark for special types of tumors, for example. So often multiple types of stains are used and the pathologist can analyze which ones attach to the tissue or not, and that can help them make the diagnosis. If the biopsy is consistent with a cancer, a full genetic analysis of the tumor can be done. This is often called next generation sequencing. It will help the oncologist to determine the best types of treatment for this particular tumor. And this is only going to be more common as we get more information about these tumors and the technology gets better. So what kind of anesthesia is used for the biopsies? Superficial biopsies like a lymph node biopsy or a thyroid biopsy or a salivary gland biopsy, they're usually done with local anesthesia only. That means you don't need to be fasting, the biopsy is quick, only take a few minutes, and you can go home right away after the biopsy. Now, deeper biopsies, let's say in the liver or inside your abdomen or somewhere near the spine, they may require sedation. Sedation or what people call twilight sedation is when we give medication to make you more comfortable. And many times you're not gonna remember the procedure. If you are having sedation for your biopsy, you will require it to be fasting. And the reason to be fasting is so you have an empty stomach, so there is less risk of having an episode of aspiration, for example. What to expect after the biopsy? As I mentioned before, if we do the biopsy with local anesthesia, usually you can go home right away after the biopsy. For patients that got sedation, they will need to rest for a short period of time while we monitor you. And if you didn't have any complications, you'll go home approximately an hour after the procedure. Most patients will only feel mild soreness at the procedure site. Severe pain is really rare, and if you're having severe pain, we'll need to look further to make sure you don't have any internal bleeding after the biopsy. It's normal to have some swelling or bruising around the biopsy site. Because we use lidocaine, which is a local anesthetic, it's common to have a little bit of swelling in the biopsy site, but it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't feel like a ball, like a golf ball or a tennis ball. Sometimes people can feel a hard spot like the size of a peanut at the site, and that can also be normal and that doesn't worry us. But if you start feeling a larger lump, especially if it's bigger than an olive or the size of a ping pong ball, and especially if it's expanding, you need to let us know. This could be what's called a hematoma. A hematoma is when there is internal bleeding and you form a ball of blood inside the tissues. This is not normal and needs to be evaluated. In most cases, as long as it's not getting bigger, we may just watch it, but we want to know about it. The biopsy site is usually just a needle puncture, like an IV puncture. And we usually don't even use a dressing at the site. We just use a drop of surgical glue, which is also called a liquid band-aid. And if everything is doing okay, you can actually peel it off the day after the biopsy. If you don't, it will fall out by itself in about a week. If they had a lung biopsy or a liver biopsy, which is close to the diaphragm, sometimes patients can have a sharp pain when they take a deep breath. And that can be normal, but as long as it's not getting worse, we can usually observe. Obviously, if it's very severe, again, we need to reevaluate. For most patients, 
Regular Tylenol is enough to take care of the pain related to the biopsy. Some patients may require some stronger pain medication, but we really want to know, evaluate the patient before we prescribe those. And this is to make sure there's no complications going on on the top of the biopsy. Complications from image guide biopsies, they are very rare, but they can happen. We do about three to 4,000 biopsies a year. The risks include bleeding or a hematoma, of course, infection, pain, or injury to nearby structures. And you should call your doctor immediately if you notice worsening of pain and expanding ball at the biopsy site, redness or pus at the biopsy site, fever or chills, or shortness of breath. And again, you can have some pain after the biopsy, but it should not be getting worse. And always let us know if anything feels wrong. You also should take it easy after the biopsy. You should avoid heavy lifting, strenuous exercise, or contact sports for at least 24 to 48 hours. This gives your body some time to heal properly. Because the biopsy site is so small, it's just a needle puncture and we put liquid band-aid on it, you're free to shower the same day of the procedure. And you'll be able to bath or use a swimming pool in two, three days after the procedure. As far as diet, you can resume a normal diet after the procedure, although if you had sedation, I would eat a very light meal in the day of the procedure because the sedation can make you a little nauseated. In most cases, the biopsy results are ready within three to five business days. However, sometimes if special tests are needed, it can take a little longer. Also, in some cases, especially if the findings are rare, the pathologist may require a second opinion for a different institution, for example, from the Mayo Clinic or Stanford or UCSF. However, most of the times we have the results in seven to 10 days. And if you haven't heard from us or from your referring physician, you should let us know so we can double check on that. You also should make sure that you have a follow-up appointment with the physician that referred you to us. That way you can discuss with them the next steps. So after the biopsy, make sure you watch for any warning signs, keep your follow-up appointments, and give yourself some time to rest and recover. Taking good care of yourself after the biopsy helps ensure the best healing and best results. Of course, if you have any questions after a procedure or something doesn't feel right, don't hesitate to contact us.